All right. Before we get started, do it. Just do it. And if you're new, do the other thing. We all know what I'm talking about. Just do it and then we can get started with this episode. In this video, I want to be building an awesome mob farm. It will actually be a general mob farm. So we will have creepers, skeletons, zombies, spiders, and every now and then maybe a witch spawning in there. So we get all the good drops. It's it's just a starter farm to get us started because we are still at the at the very beginning in this world. But before we get started with all of that, I have to show you so many things. As you maybe have seen already, there are copper blocks outside there. This is not the craziest thing. <laughs> it's actually quite common because I wanted to get ahead of myself with oxidizing them. Although it turns out I might need them like this unoxidized. It's been actually I think five or six weeks since I recorded the first episode and I only uploaded the first episode uh, last week but here we are I had my exams there was so much going on in my life I had this first episode finished but I didn't want to upload it when I wasn't ready to record another one maybe you already saw it what what do you think maybe comment down below what do you think gives it away that I killed the ender dragon it is the levels when you kill the ender dragon you get so much xp and it always is somewhat above uh, not above about 60 it's like some 57 or 58 levels i had but then you can see i also have an elytra on me i have a few rockets this is actually the reason i want to build the mob farm because as you can see here i have quite a bit of sugarcane but my resources regarding the gunpowder are are getting low and <laughs> there's another spoiler when i had lots of time i would just hunt with the skeletons but that's for another time that's for another time for the looks of the build, we want a lot of orange. Ideally, all of it made from copper, but that's just too expensive. So one thing that we will be using is orange wool. And I cannot remember if I ever got some sheep. Yes, I have. I have three sheep <laughs> and lots of cows. So maybe I need to get those sheep out there, color them orange and, and get to breeding and, and farming lots of them. I'm also sorry, I don't know if you noticed already or not, but I think the term is overmodulating. I haven't recorded in so long, so I have my settings not correct uh, all the time. Another orange block that I want to use is acacia wood. So when you strip it, it looks quite amazing. Um, let's take a look. And actually, it works very well in a build together with the copper blocks. Actually, let's go over to the, to the copper. So if we strip the acacia log, that fits very well. It almost from the distance, if you have enough copper in there, it, it pretends to be copper as well and just gives it some structure, uh, some texture. So that's really nice. I think some of my cows escaped. <laughs> yeah, quite a few. And I wonder if any of them died in the cactus, but it looks like none did. I think there was another one. I don't know. Okay, let's come back in here and I just realized I <laughs> haven't shown you myself flying yet so why is it not working is it because of all the cows okay here we go <laughs> we are flying you cannot imagine I guess maybe <laughs> probably since most of you play Minecraft as well you can imagine how amazing this feeling is I've had it for a few few weeks now, but I have also not been playing on this world for at least two or three weeks. So this is just so much fun. And this area is just amazing. I mean, look at this. This is so crazy. We just have to be super careful <laughs> to not drop down here. This is the water that I used to once climb up here when I didn't have an elytra. And it's the remnants that I chose to keep for now because it looked somewhat nice. But yeah, anyhow, let's grab, I already saw a yellow flower and a red flower to make these sheep orange. <laughs> and I realize that only one flower each only makes two orange dye. And right now I have three sheep, which, yeah, I just want all of them to be, all of them to be orange. I know the plan is to 
to breed them so that their their babies also are orange. So in theory, I could I could start with only two of them, but I think it's nicer to not have <laughs> a literal black sheep in the middle. And here we go. So this will be, I guess, my life now for the next, I don't know. I don't know. I, I haven't even calculated how much wool I need, but I think I want to make the, the spawning platforms from orange wool. And yeah, so I need quite a bit of wool, at least, at least five to ten stacks. I, I have to count. <laughs> While I'm waiting for all the sheep to grow up <laughs> and all of my wool to generate, I, I need to harvest some acacia wood, which is nice as well. And right now I am, you can see over there, <laughs> the big mountain. Right now I am in one of those ravines in this desert and just exploring the area a little bit, lighting up caves because once we have a mob farm, it will only be so much productive if we don't go very much, very high into the sky or if we don't light up all the caves around this area. And I have not been doing much of caving, <laughs> more, more of the strip mining. Um, to get all the resources that I need. So some of the surface iron, some of the surface copper is really nice. And then there's one more thing that I'm looking for, and that is a geode. I already... Yes, <laughs> no sand falling on, on my head. I already found one geode when I was exploring in last episode uh, through the ocean, but that one is quite far away. And ideally I would find one that's somewhat close so that that we can grow crystals while also we are in our area. I don't know what range actually is the correct range for crystals to grow in a geode. But yeah, for this farm I want to be using tinted glass because with those general mob farms sometimes it's super annoying because you need so such a big roof on top of it to, to make it dark in the farm or you build something around. But I think it's really fun to, to be able to look inside. So that's what I'm looking for. <laughs> I don't know if I will have enough tinted glass in this one episode. We have all the sand we need, but not the amethyst crystals. Wait a second. <laughs> okay, I was just running down here, as you, as you still just saw. And then I find this suspicious <laughs> hole <laughs> with, I think that's smooth basalt. Is it? Let's pick this up. And the smooth basalt and then the calcite is on the outside of a geode. What is this? Oh, that is very, very nice. I'm not sure if that was very smart. There could have been a creeper here. Listen to the sounds though. Oh my god, I, I just scared myself a little bit because, yeah, I, I'm i not sure if I would survive a creeper blast. Actually, I, I should do some testing in, in another world, in a creative world, to see if I can survive one creeper blast because it helps out so much just the knowledge of it. I still have my shield, but that was dangerous. Let's use our fortune pickaxe. And you can see all of them pretty much, except for this one. And this one, but many of them, ah, not all of them, <laughs> a few of them have grown already quite large. So it seems that I was in this area for them to load. Very, very nice. I actually don't know right now how much do I need for tinted glass. I can only do that in a workbench. With all the amethysts that I just got, we have almost two stacks. Now let's see how much. I think it's two for one. No, four. Yeah, two for one, four for two. That's very nice. We still need loads and loads of them. So two stacks of amethyst shards makes one stack of tinted glass. I think we will be uncovering this whole geode. And probably most of you already know, we are looking for these blocks with this cross in the middle. They are the budding amethyst block. You can pick up this block, no problem, and it goes into your inventory and you can build with it. It looks quite nice and makes this awesome sound. But 
the budding amethyst you cannot mine like if i mine it it just i can mine it but you cannot get the block so it just gets destroyed and these are the blocks where the amethyst shards grow on and if you uncover them from all sides you have more space for them to grow and yeah in theory that should be a lot quicker let's see how many budding amethysts we have in all of this geode I think at this point I can call myself legitimately a shepherd. As you can see, we have many, many orange sheep. And actually I have got enough wool by now. You remember probably that in the beginning the pen was only this small and the problem was as I had too many sheep, they would eat all the grass and it couldn't grow back quickly enough. So with sheep, if you do it manually, it's good to have a big area so that they can regrow their wool very quickly. And once I expanded this area and bred them a few more times, quite quickly I got to all the wool that I needed. Let's head over to the to the amethyst geode, although it's not really a geode anymore. <laughs> this is how I currently enter this area. And as you can see here, I mined out almost everything except for the budding amethyst. And yeah, you can see over there, that is one that has grown completely so we can mine it with our fortune pickaxe and we get i think between 4 and 16. okay this was a low roll yeah as you can see i've been here and th down there there's a hole where i've been afk i don't have all the amethyst shards yet that i need but i have quite many and it's not going to take very long anymore so this is all the orange wool that we need and quite a bit of the amethyst shards but <laughs> Here's more. So I think in total we need 42 or 43 amethyst shards, stacks of amethyst shards. And so if we fill this box up, we have 39 stacks. So I think it's literally only half an hour of AFK. It's sometimes very difficult. On one hand, I want to use a fortune pickaxe to mine the shards, but then the amethyst, uh, the budding amethyst block breaks quite quickly and I accidentally broke one down here once so I have to be very careful and then whenever you have one like here that is fully grown up no wait yes this one is fully grown I hope yes <laughs> whenever you have one that is fully grown it's mostly easy for example this one is fully grown as well mostly easy to tell that they are fully grown but when they are just about to be fully grown from some angle sometimes it looks deceiving but to make sure you can press f3 on java edition and you can see on the very right when it says targeted block then it says the block type and it says right now minecraft column large amethyst bud and the fully grown one will say amethyst cluster here we have one and there you can see it says amethyst cluster so this one is ready to be mined and we are actually getting the drops. I'm happy when this is done and maybe at one point I will create something automatic. I think there is only one more thing that I need to start building and that is a lot of sand. So I have my flint and steel and the TNT that I found in the, in the desert temples and I will check for a good area that I can destroy a little bit. And it was just a little bit laggy because I still had my render distance set to 20 so that the amethysts would grow and the sheep would regrow. And now <laughs> that the render distance is a little bit shorter, it's somewhat smooth. <laughs> As you know, probably my laptop, I'm playing on my laptop, it's not too amazing. I don't wanna destroy too much of the nature around here, but maybe we'll settle down here. Probably you have seen it already or not. I am inspired by Etho. Very nice, TNT. <laughs> I was a little bit worried that maybe the second TNT would explode from the first one. TNT drops all the blocks that it destroys. So with that one explosion, we got more than two stacks of sand. So that's quite decent. Something that I did want to try though is what happens if we place it actually into the ground. 
and now we have four stacks and 20. It's just a little bit more than two stacks as well. I don't think it's worth it. Let's just do it like this and only place one. My mouse is a little bit broken, so sometimes it places two in very quick succession. We just have to be careful that the next explosion doesn't destroy all the sand. I still have to experiment with it a little bit. I'm not sure if those were too close to one another, but I'm pretty sure that this already got us a decent amount of sand. Let's put all the sand we have so far. We don't need much more than... No, we don't need more than a full shulker. We actually only need 12 stacks, maybe? Um, half of the amethyst shards that we need. So with that, we already have half a shulker box filled. What do I see here? There is a spawner down here. What kind of spawner is it? It's a skeleton spawner? A skeleton rattles somewhere, the subtitles say. So yeah, it looks like a skeleton spawner. Very nice. That's, that's a nice surprise. A few more golden apples, a music disc, and yeah, nothing else that is very interesting. Sooner or later, I wonder, we are already at the point where we don't need a simple basic spawner XP farm. Or at least we already have the spider and I soon want to be building an ender, ender farm, enderman farm. But still, the bones are quite interesting from a spider spawner. So maybe we'll do that. But I also am looking forward to at some point building a wither skeleton farm because I already found a very nice, a very nice um, nether fortress for it. Not sure if we will actually be doing something with that, but with that, one stack is missing, but I can I can live with that. We have plenty of sand that we need to cook up to turn into glass. And I think when I have done that, we can start a time lapse with the build. And with that, I think we are almost done. So far, there are still torches in there, but they will get removed once we turn on the farm because of all the water that spills the torches out. And something else that I did off camera is I built the crappiest <laughs> item storage system <laughs> ever. I have some plans for the future to transport the items to a central storage location. So this is very much temporary. And then I added campfires down there. And maybe you can see I added stairs on the edge. That will help for all the mobs to actually drop into the middle. And I wanted to talk about the calcite. In my creative world, when I was designing this build, more or less, I first used smooth quartz. And to be honest, I think smooth quartz looks nicer, but the calcite kind of has this dirty look to it and I think it fits better so yeah the smooth quartz is is cleaner <laughs> and I think as a block it looks a lot nicer but I think in this context the calcite fits a lot better and I'm very happy with how this looks other things that need to be talked about 
I don't have any wax yet and as you can see the copper is starting to oxidize again. I can always come here and scrape it up off with the axe but that is going to be quite annoying. So sooner or later we want to be building a honey farm or a wax farm. But I think for now the only thing that is left to do is to actually build the clock and turn on the farm. And I actually don't have a way to get in here yet. <laughs> so as you can see here, it is completely covered. What I can do right now is to just kind of make a hole here and enter. And honestly, I'm not so sure. Currently, all of these are bottom slabs. But yeah, I will build the redstone clock here for this farm. And then I will see if there are any blocks that are spawnable for mobs. But it's quite interesting. To, to be inside of the tinted glass. It looks very, very funny. <laughs> as you can see, uh, as you can hear, all the water is turned off. When I placed all of the repeaters, the observer got triggered once. Then we have a normal repeater clock. All of them are set to four ticks delay. And then we have a comparator over here that is set to subtraction mode. What that does is when we turn this lever on, the clock starts up all the water is going to turn off once it arrives here and once it arrives here the signal turns off and then we turn the water back on again basically here we go <laughs> and then because i enjoy being able to turn farms off we can add this lever and i have to think about this a little bit hmm this is a little bit unfortunate I wonder how I will be doing it because right now if I put this lever over there no <laughs> then it's gonna I can turn this off as well yes <laughs> I don't need this lever probably <laughs> if I understand correctly this lever is just gonna serve both as an on and off switch and to regulate the clock I think this should be fine let's see down here Okay, all the water is running, all the water is running. If we turn this lever on, the water is turning off everywhere. Very nice. In theory, and there we can see, <laughs> in theory, mobs would be spawning now and the farm is working. Practically speaking, we haven't really lit up any of the caves, so the raids are going to be terrible. I can maybe go very high into the sky and use the replay mod to kind of see what this will work like if there are no other places around dark spots where mobs could spawn but we're getting a mob every now and then already which is quite nice and one spider is getting stuck i am the king of the world <laughs> but i'm also scared that's why i dropped the water down there let's see in the replay mod how many mobs are spawning right now i think it's looking good. I think it's looking good. We are now in the replay and I have the game paused, but it's looking really good right now. I think this farm will serve us well, either when we build an AFK spot in the sky or when we start lighting up all the caves. Ah, look at that. This bottom layer seems like it might be a little bit too bright. Only a few things are spawning in the middle, while the other layers all are very crowded. Let's look at this one more time. Yes, you can see on the top levels, so many mobs, mo more mobs are spawning. So we need to fix this on the bottom level. Maybe we need to add one more layer of tinted glass or think of something else. I'm not sure, maybe it's also the campfires, but I can't imagine. It's probably the light that comes in from from down here let's jump down <laughs> uh, it's scary even though you know that nothing's going to happen and i came prepared i built my tower out of sand so that i don't have to mine all of it the easy scaffolding if you don't have scaffolding <laughs> that's quite mesmerizing actually here we go Okay, I think that was maybe two minutes, not more than that. And you can see still some more mobs are falling down. Let's see what those two minutes have brought us. We have three different items right now. Okay, we have all the torches. 
that's decent. I'm looking at the gunpowder right now mainly because that's what I need. 25, 17, and 5. That's very decent. It's not quite a stack, but maybe three quarters of a stack in, a, in just a few minutes. That's so nice. And with that, I think we can call this an episode. Yes, that was a lot of fun. There are so many things to do for the next episode. Mainly, both of my elytra wings are almost broken, so we need to find a solution for that. Maybe we will do some villager trading. I'm looking forward to it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like. If you're new, consider subscribing and I will see you in the next episode.